the descendants of Esau are Edomites. And and where what what lineage did they come from? Ham, Shem, or Japheth? Shem. The Edomites? Yeah. What, what? I'm not sure. You're not sure. Okay, what color was Shem? I don't know. What color are the Hebrew Israelites? Black. So what color was Shem? I don't know. I'm not sure. What color was Ham? Black. African. So you're not sure about the Shemites. You know that the Hebrews are Shemites, right? Yeah, Hebrews are Shemites. So what color was Shem? Black. So what color is Edom? Edom? Red and hairy. Red and hairy. Red and hairy. Okay, is that because he was an albino? Probably. Okay, do all al do all al al albinos pass on? Where, where are you going with this? I I'll let you know where I'm going because I'm asking you questions. Esau was the progenitor of the Hedomites. That's what I know. That's what the scripture says. I'm going according to the scripture. Don't ask me a bunch of questions and try to do your gymnastic stuff. Okay? It's not going to work with me. So you're allowed to ask questions, but I can't ask you questions. So, so Edom, Edom comes, Edom came from a black man. So he's really black. He just lost his pigment. Okay, so you have now a red man. He could have passed down other black lineage to his ancestors. He himself was red. That doesn't mean his children were red. They lived amongst the Hamites, who you said were black. They lived amongst the Shemites, who you said were black. They mixed in. So most likely their children had black skin. Does that make some logical sense? What does God say about the children? Not the question. You're not answering the question. Esau, the Edomites, dwelt amongst black people. If Ham was black, because the Hittites, the Canaanites, all of them were from Ham, who you said were black. You said Shem was black. So Edom dwelt amongst the people of Shem. So they intermingled. Most, if, if Edom had a black father and a black mother, most likely his wife, the wife of Edom, was black. The kids must have been black. So who are the Edomites today? Do you know any Edomites of Asian times? I personally have not met an Edomite because the Edomites are an extinct race or mixed in with other people. And many people today are mixed in with so-called Edomites. Who was King Herod? He was an Ed Edomite. Okay. Where, where is this generation? His people? Where are they today? Many people from his generation went into the Caucasus region. Man, many of the people stayed within the Middle East. Many of them scattered around just like the Hebrews did as well. They didn't mix with the Romans? Many of them did just like the Hebrews did. In fact, God said he's going to call the Hebrew, Hebrews from the four corners of the earth and that they're going to come from all nations and they're going to come and regather back into Israel, which means that you're going to see a mixed race. In fact, the Hebrews were mixed even in the first century. The Hebrews were mixed with the Persians. They were mixed with the Babylonians. Jesus within his lineage had Ruth. Okay, so you have a lot of mixtures already. In fact, two of the tribes were mixed with the Egyptians, the Hamites, which is Ephraim and Manasseh. So we already have mixtures. Was Ephraim and Manasseh a real Hebrew? I don't know. What what did what did the scripture say is gonna to happen to the children of Edom? They're gonna be wiped out and destroyed or even subjugated. Where does it say that? I don't have my references right now, but you know and I know that that's a fact. You're a preacher. Doesn't mean I memorize every single script, but I can find it for you. Find it for me, please. Find it for you? Okay. The, the Bible says in the book of Obadiah. But um, hold on one moment. I just want to get another reference as well. Every time you do, every single time you see the youth like 
You like it, huh? I think this guy is Damon. Hmm? It's Damon. Damon? Yeah. It says concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador is sent amongst the heathen. Arise, let us arise against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small amongst the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You have dwelt in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. That says in his heart, who shall bring me down? The cliff of the rock. The cliff of the rock. You just said they went into the cliff of the rocks, right? So these are the people? Sure, we're talking about Edom. Okay, go ahead. Okay. And do you do you know what the what the prophecy about Esau was that where he would dwell and what his name means? Okay, I'll finish. It says here. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong book. What are you guys about to do? What she wants you to wait for? Though thou exalt yourself as the eagle, and though thou set your nest... I, I don't know, you tell me. Rome, uh, who else? Greeks, who else, who else exalt themselves as the eagle, right? Babylon, Babylon, America, the Jews. What Jews? Why do you think the Hebrews were scattered? Because they had pride and they disobeyed the laws of... The Jews exalt themselves as the eagle? There's actually a passage where it says that uh, in the book of Revelations where with... Um, you see, you don't want to go there. Okay. Thou shalt mount up with wings like eagles. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. Speaking about the Hebrews. But, but nonetheless. Thou, though thou exalt yourself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, thence, thence will I bring you down, says the Lord. So, so say what you're saying. So God says, though they exalt themselves as a star, Right, that's when they went to the moon, to space. He said, what makes you think that that's the right interpretation? Just because it fits with the 21st century? That's the interpretation I get from the elders. Which elders? The Israelites. So, who went to the stars? Rome went to the stars? Babylon went to the stars? Because you just said Babylon. Okay, so, no, we're talking about the, you, you can't switch it. Who went to the stars? America went to the stars? Russia went to the stars. You said, you just told me that uh, the one that exalted himself, who exalted himself, you said it was Rome. You said Babylon. You said they, okay, but you agreed. So you said Rome. So did Rome go to the stars? Esau went to the stars. Okay, so Rome didn't go to the stars. So right now we're already seeing some flaws in your interpretation. It says here, Okay, so are we talking about the same people? Not spiritual gymnastics. I'm reading what you said. You said that this is speaking about a people that exalt themselves. You said it's Edom, and you said it, which we're talking about Edom, and you said they're Rome. Okay. It says here, if these... Okay, and it goes, set your nest amongst the stars, thence will I bring you down, says the Lord. If thieves come, came to you, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they... That part, it says, how are you cut off if thieves come to you by night? That means Edom is still here. That's what, it's, that's what it means, at that, that particular verse. Go ahead. Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers come to you, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with you have deceived you and prevailed against you. 
They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under you. Stop right there. So, so, what that is saying that Esau is still here. That's we're reading a book that was written many hundred years before Jesus. Okay, so this is now 2,000 and a few 500 years later, 400 years later. So, no, what I'm... So, you're saying they died out? What I'm saying and what I believe is that the nation as a whole has been mixed in, has died it. Yeah, yeah. Does that mean the seed has diminished, disappeared? No, uh, no, no. This, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you could look at it like that, but not as not as a nation as, as per se, but not as there's not an Edom, Edom nation. It's not Rome. It's not Rome, if you look at Italy, has been mixed in many times. It's not Babylon. It's not Israel. It's not the English people. Do you, is it, do you believe it's the English people? All of them, all of them is the same, right? All of them is the same. Don't try to separate them, okay? All, all of them. They're, 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 um... Yeah, exactly. They're, they're heathen, they're, they're Esau, they're my enemy. And that's what you have to know. That's what you have to keep in mind. Keep it simple. Don't get... Don't, don't get into dialectics with, you know, um, oh, their seed is here or neither here or there. They're here and they're, and they're all over you. They're all around you. Okay, so let's go to the text, okay? And God said, now read Deuteronomy 20. Now let's finish the text. When, when you finish that, read Deuteronomy, read Deuteronomy 28, 68. Okay, I'll, I'll read that after, okay? Is this all you want to read from Obadiah? Yeah, yeah. Nothing else on, on Obadiah? Nothing else on the Edomites? God say he'll bring Can them I, down, right? Let me just finish. God say he'll bring them down. No, no, no. Cast me. Well, it's important to... Oh, I'm reading the wrong book. That's right. we, we got the idea. We got the idea. God said he's going to bring them down. Right? We got the idea. We got okay, that. But that's very vague. Shall I not in that day, said the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O T men, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall come to you, and you shall be cut off forever. In the day, okay, no, no, the, the script says it. No, 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 Wait, no, no, no. What I said to you is, let's read the rest, because what you left it off was vague. I'm not saying this is vague. It says, In that day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that thy, the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was one of them. But you should not have looked on the day of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger. Neither should thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of thy destruction. Neither should thou have spoken proudly in the day of his distress. So. This is speaking of when. when. When is this all happening? When when did he deny his brother? This was this was at the time when they were crossing over over the, over the land and trying to take over the territory, correct? It happened then. It's happening now. Okay, I just want to confirm that this is a time when uh, they're trying to take over the land and Esau stood in the way. Correct? This is happening around the time of Joshua and those that time am I am I right here or do you have a different understanding I have a different understanding it, it happened then it's still happening now right they're still in they're still they're still in control so it's ha it happened then and it's happening now and it's still happening okay so let's just read it says in verse 13 thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of your people in the day of their calamity Yes, thou should not have looked on their affliction in the day of the calamity, nor have laid hands on the substance in the day of their calamity. Neither should thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither should thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto you. 
your reward shall return unto your own head. For as thou hast drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continuously. Yes, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, the house of Edah for stubble, and they shall kindle in them, and devour them, and they shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain of the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath. Captivity of Jerusalem, which is of Zarephath, shall possess the cities of the south. And the Savior shall come up to Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Okay, so that's very clear. There's going to be judgment upon the people of Esau. That's the prophecy, right? It hasn't happened yet, right? So that's the prophecy. That's what we wait on. That's what the saints are waiting on. So, look, I, I think we're waiting for an ultimate judgment. But one thing we've learned in the New Testament is that all fall under sin and all fall under condemnation. And in fact, this judgment of separation from God is inclusive of every person that has sinned against the Lord. Every, would you agree? Were the, were the Hedomites given the, statue, the laws and statutes or just Jacob? The Hebrews were given the laws of Jacob, which goes to my next point. In the book of Deuteronomy, you wanted to go there. In the, in the book of um, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 8, this is the law. It says, do not despise an Edomite, for the Edomites, hold on, and Edomites are related to you. Do not despise an Egyptian, because you resided as foreigners in their country. And it goes on and says, the children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. So, this is the law of God that even then, with big judgments against Edom, the final outcome of a nation that has stood against the Lord they will be destroyed but we do know that even the people of Israel have mixed in many of the Edomites have entered into the temple in the third generation and so what I'm saying to you to, to is this God says we shouldn't deal with them in in any um, um, awkward manner is that what you're saying? no what I am saying is that those who desire to come to the Lord of the camp of the Edomites, God has touched their heart. And even in the Old Covenant, it says here, like I just read, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 8. No, I didn't say that. It said, we should not deal with them that way. God says, I will destroy them. It says, yeah, look, this is what it says. It says, God says, no, God says we should not deal with them that way. It says, the, it says the sons... It says, the children that are begotten of the Edomites shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. Yeah, but they will not be, they will not be like the Israelites. They may enter into the congregation, but they will not be like the Israelites. Okay, so... They, they, will, they will serve the Israelites. Okay, even if that's the case, that means that some of them, they're not going to... So, no, hold on, hold on a second. So what you're saying is that... You can't just read Obadiah and say they're all going to be destroyed. Some of them are going to mix into the house of Israel. Some of them are still going to be into the camp. Even if they're treated differently, they're going to survive. They still have access to the grace and mercy of Yeshua or whatever you want to call Jesus that we read in the Bible. So what this is telling me and what we see from the Apostle Paul is that all have been noted to be under sin and been separated from God and because of the blood and the sacrifice of Yeshua any person that places faith in him can now be children of God through the new covenant if you want to live under the old covenant which has been replaced by the new covenant you can do that but then you yourself I'm not sure what you're doing with your life and how you're living but I do know one thing, that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except by Him. 
And if the Edomites can enter into the congregation on the third generation, that means there's still hope for the children of Esau, whoever they are today, the people that are mixed. He says not one will be left. He said, this You just said they're going to be slaves. So if, if the children of Esau are going to be slaves, that means there will be some of them left. It's either they're all going to be destroyed or some of them are going to be slaves. And if some of them are going to be slaves, that means some of them are still going to be left. So obviously the context or the interpretation that you're reading destroyed, because that can be applied to even the Jews at points. It can be applied to many other nations at points. But you have to understand it in its, the fullness of the context. And what we just read and what you just agreed to is that there still is some kind of hope for the children of Esau. If you're a slave, are you destroyed? Sure, maybe you can be destroyed from the fullness of life. Maybe if you want to read it like that. But that still doesn't, that still doesn't deal with what you're trying to say. Because, hear me out. I'm not trying to say, any, I'm not trying to say anything. I just, I'm just um, asking you what the scripture means when I ask you to read these verses. Let me ask you something, man. If skin color is what, what defines what an Esa, e Edomite is or not, I just shared with you... E Said, who said skin color? You just assumed that uh, that lady standing there was a Hebrew just because she was black. You just made it clear that uh, the Hebrews are black, and and so what I'm trying to what I'm trying to share with you is this: if if Edom came from the Shemites, and you're saying the Shemites were black, that means Edom was black, although he had red skin. Maybe he came out as an albino. So that means his children, most his wife, most likely was black. His children may have come out black, but yet he's an, he's an Edomite. So what this tells me is this. You can't just determine that someone's a Hebrew simply because of the color of their skin. I was going on Deuteronomy 28, 68. Okay, let's go, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, 68. Deuteronomy 28, 68 says this. And the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. Egypt again with ships. But the way whereof I spake unto you, you shall see it no more again. And there shall, there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondsmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So what are you trying to understand from this verse? I'm trying to understand, are those people the Israelites? The people that were going to be punished and brought into slave ships again are Israelites, correct. They are Israelites? They were Israelites. What people did that happen to? Well, we see very clearly that, um, from history that around the time of the destruction of the temple and even around the Babylonian uh, Empire and all the other empires that came in, many Hebrews dwelt within Egypt. Many Hebrews went into slavery through the Babylonian Empire, the Egyptian Empire, the Roman Empire, and they were carried along by ships, even in those days. And this is historical. So we, we know that it's talking about Egypt, Mitzrayim, and... Egypt just simply means the house of bondage. Well, we can call our work the house of bondage if we want. You, I mean, you just redefined d d destruction saying, slavery saying that slavery is destruction. But, but we do know from the context of the book that it's speaking about Egypt, because this is the same book that talks about... about um, the. Egypt simply means a house of bondage. It doesn't mean literally Egypt. Okay, so I guess Egypt could be Jamaica because the, the Hebrews went to Jamaica, so it could be anywhere. It could, many, many slaves were brought to England, so maybe England's the house of bondage. Trinidad's the house of bondage. America's the house of bondage. We can say everybody that was a slave in Africa is a house of bondage. We could say Israel's the house of bondage, according to what you're trying to say, but, but that's the wrong... I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just trying to interpret the scriptures. I'm not trying to say anything. I'm trying to interpret the scripture. So if house of bondage means anywhere that somebody's placed in slavery, then Israel is Egypt. We can say that Rome is Egypt. We can say anywhere in this world where black people have been slaves is Egypt. But you're trying to make Egypt into America, aren't you? God says he'll scatter us to all corners of the earth. Did he not? I agree. So every part of the earth is called Egypt. Yes, anywhere there's bondage for the Israelites is Egypt. Okay, so there you go. So it doesn't prove that um, just because the black people came from uh, slave ships into America, it doesn't prove that they were Hebrews because 
there's been slavery in so many countries. The Irish were slaves, the Chinese were slaves, Indians were slaves, uh, different African tribes were slaves. So everywhere that's full of slavery is called Egypt. So therefore, this doesn't prove that the American, uh, the African Americans are Hebrews. The most diabolical event in history was the Atlantic slave trade. Don't try to mix it up with it. Irish and all these other people. We're talking about a significant occurrence, okay? So don't try to don't try to spread it all over. I agree with you. It's a very diabolic. I, it's a very diabolical slavery. I, I'm, nobody's denying that. But but I'm just trying to deal with this issue of of about Hebrews and all this kind of stuff. First of all, skin color doesn't necessarily determine whether someone's a Hebrew. I'll tell you why. Because they were scattered all over the world. There's going to be Chinese Hebrews, white Hebrews that might look Edomite to you, but they're not Edomites. So we have to understand that the Hebrews, the Hebrews were scattered all over the world. There were Persian Hebrews because the Persian Empire ruled. There were Babylonian Hebrews. There there were so many different Hebrews all over the world. So this argument that it's only the black people and the white man is Esau, it doesn't stand up under scrutiny. And that's what I'm trying to share with you. I did mention color. Okay, so let's remove the color. So there could be a white Jew that looks Edomite. There could be a black Jew that looks African. There could be a Chinese Jew and an Indian Jew. And if you if you're cool with that, I'm cool with that because it stand that that looks like what we see in the Bible. And I'm not saying everybody's a Jew. There are fake Jews. There's false Jews. But we know from Scripture that many Jews, even Jesus and his lineage, had mixtures. Even two of the tribes were mixed with the Hamites. So. So we have to, and even when we see that the East, e Edomites can be, the Edomites were brought into the temple, that means that they were, there was an acceptance amongst them as they converted and as the generations passed and as they mix in. So, so that's why we can't just, just blanket statement everybody. The Bible says, for God so loved the, the world. He did love people. And he loves his own. He loves, he's gathering back the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. I agree with that. But anyone that the Lord calls, anyone that the Lord touches is worthy of salvation, just like we see in the Edomites, just like... That's philosophy. Where does it say that in the Bible? Where does it say, as many as the Lord who, who will call? I can get that for you. That's Acts chapter 2, verses 38 to 42. It says here, I will, for no man to perish, but it, I, I will for no man to perish, but for all to come to everlasting life. Acts chapter 2, verses uh, nine, uh, 8. It says, How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, parts of Libya, and Cyrene, strangers of Rome. Jews and proselytes. So there were Jews and people that converted to Judaism and to the Hebrew movement. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. And Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all you that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. And it goes on and says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaids, on my slaves and my handmaids. So these are speaking of those who believe in, in Yeshua and were slaves and also those who are servant girls. I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And it goes on and says, later on, it says, This Jesus has God raised up, whereof you are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. And it goes on and says, uh, And when they were pricked in the heart, it says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart and said unto Peter to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all 
that are afar off, even as many as the Lord God will call. And with many other words, words he testified and exhorted, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. So we see that Jews of every nation, perhaps mixed in, we don't know, but they were speaking different language, they were all over the world, they accepted Jesus, and, G and, and, and uh, Peter himself said, This promise is for you, Israelites, to your children, Israelites, and as many as the Lord will call. So there's three categories. One, the Hebrews. Two, their children. And three, anyone else that the Lord will call. It's very clear here in the book of Acts. So that means if you're not in the category of the Hebrews, if you're not in the category of the children of the Hebrews, then there's another category. And whoever those people are, it cannot be the Hebrews. According to the text itself. What gate? There are 12 gates. And the seed is called by Isaac. What gate are all these people going to go through? It's a simple answer. It says that we've received the seed of the Holy Spirit, which is the seed of Jesus Christ. And when we receive Jesus Christ, we now are grafted into the people of Israel through the tribe of Judah. Jesus comes from the tribe of Judah, and those who are in Christ are in his tribe. Wait, wait, actually, what, what tribe... What will be written on the gate? Jesus? Jesus is the king of the kingdom. He, he's, he's, he, he's the light. He's, he's the lamp. They're going to they're gonna walk through the gate of Judah? Which gate are they going to go through? Listen, if we're, all, we're speculating right now, but one thing we know for sure is that we have the seed of God within us through Jesus Christ. And I can show you scriptures that says that. So if we have the seed of Jesus Christ, that means we're children of God through Jesus Christ. And if we're sons of Jesus Christ, we're Christians or whatever you want to call it, that means that we are children of him. And he's from the tribe of Judah. And Isaiah chapter 53 says this. And Jesus, we know, didn't have any children. I'm not sure what you believe. But it says here, He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. He shall bear their iniquities. In the verse before, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When you shall make his offering a soul, an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So, so Jesus will see his seed. Who is the seed of Jesus Christ? Did he choose Isaac? That's what I want. Did God choose Isaac? God chose Isaac and he did not choose Esau. He didn't choose the rest of the world. But yet we see as many as those whom we call is another category, according to the Apostle Peter, that some people that are not Hebrews, that are not children of the Hebrews, will be entering in. Now, it says here, you didn't answer the question, who is the seed of Jesus? I don't know who the seed of Jesus is. Okay, the seed of Jesus Christ are those who have accepted Jesus Christ.